Hey guys, so I'm pretty excited about today. <clears throat> we've shuffled around the routine a little bit. We've come up with a new weekly plan and Friday is going to be training day, which is pretty exciting because it means we're dedicating a whole day to doing all the things that are gonna be fun training rather than the necessarily, uh, sorry, the necessary behavioral training. So today I'm going to teach Abra how to do the lure and hopefully get her tuned in to start chasing the lure. And then we're gonna be able to see her jumping off the dock into the pool to chase the flirt pole. So she doesn't know what it is at the moment. So we're gonna generate a bit of fun for her today. Hopefully get that prey drive kicking in, uh, get a bit of excitement to chase the lure and then uh, see how she goes, see what sort of drive she's got to chase it and see what sort of focus she's got to, um, <clears throat> to, to go after it and watch it and control herself. Once she gets a bit of drive to chase it, then I'll start doing some training with her to get her to ignore it again. Uh, but we'll see how we go. So I'm pretty excited about this. I'm gonna go through a few dogs today doing the same thing. So it's just Abra out here at the moment by herself with a short little lure course set up. She has no idea what it is. As you can see, she's not showing any excitement like the other dogs do because they all know what's going on. So hopefully we can spark her interest and, uh, and get her involved. Abra, come here darling, what's this? Abra, what's this? Ready? Ready? What's this? Come on. Come on. Good girl. Oh, you ready, darling? You ready, darling? Oh, you ready? Ready? You ready? Come on. Come on. Ready? Good girl, darling. Good girl. There is. There is. Good girl. Good girl, there it is. What is it? Good girl, here we go. Here we go, come on. Come on. Good girl, well done. Good job, Abra. Good girl, darling. Good girl, well done. Well, yeah, so I had to run along with her for a little bit there just to spark her interest. So let's run it out again. And, uh, See how she goes this time. It's usually pretty easy to get him to tune into the lure when you've got a few dogs running it. Uh, but with Abra, I don't want to do that because she's likely to want to chase the dogs rather than the lure. So I'm going to tune into the lure by herself. Means I'll probably have to run a few laps, but once she tunes in, it should be pretty good. You ready, darling? Go, 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 girl, go. Good girl. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Good girl, darling. Good job. Good girl. Hey, bro. You ready? You ready? Good girl, good girl, darling. Good girl, well done. Good girl, well done, darling. Good girl, good girl, darling. Good girl, well done. Good job, Abra. Good girl. That's it, darling. Good job. Go again. Ready to go again, darling? You ready? You ready? Good girl, well done, good job. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl, Abra. Good girl. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Good job.
Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Good job. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Good girl. So we're starting to see a little bit more enthusiasm. And, and as you can see there at the end, when she gets the lure, she's starting to really uh, enjoy fighting with it. So that's what we want to see. We want to see her spark up this. Oh, this is a fun game. And focus her energy on chasing and catching the lure. The plan will be that once we spark this into a bit of a game, this is what will also turn into a bit of a bite work training uh, when we can put a leather strap on the end of it and start using those um, uh, bite commands to engage in the lure and when to hold it. So this will form part of her distraction training. It's a very effective training tool, not only just to exercise the dogs, but it is once they get a really strong drive to want to chase it and a really enthusiastic play with the lure, uh, it's a very, very good distraction to train them uh, to listen to your commands and only go when told to go. So uh, good stuff from Abra. There are dogs that just take to this like a duck to water. Abra is a little bit slow compared to, say, Roscoe and Fredo. Um, you know, they just, as soon as they saw it, just twinged on and chased it with all their might right from the get-go. So I didn't want Roscoe here. He would just dominate this. So he's jumped the fence twice, and I've brought him back in and, and told him to stay. So he hasn't jumped over now, which is great, but I'm about to call him uh, after the next couple of runs and then give Abra a bit of competition see how she goes hopefully she wants to fight for the lure and not try to take out roscoe right out, let's do another run good girl darling Oop. ready out got some competition now ready up bro yeah so too much ready out so I've put Roscoe in a bit of a drop here. We haven't done this level of distraction with him for quite a while, but now that he's here, I just thought I'd put a lead on because he's definitely going to get up. Nope. Good girl, darling. Rightio, so I've got a bit of a zigzag pattern going on here. So for anyone out there who is new to the lure, you've got one or you're doing it, don't recommend doing this kind of pattern. I'm doing this pattern to spark an interest in a dog that's only just discovering the lure. She's not running uh, at full speed. So what I'm trying to do is get this lure zigzagging left and right and changing direction to spark her interest and go, what is that? And, and keep it exciting. If I just had a big oval shape, um, you know, that's the kind of run that you would use for a dog that is experience and is going to run full speed and give everything they've got uh, on the lure. So for example, Roscoe, Matilda, uh, the Boxers, Tilly, Joey, all those dogs, they will put everything they've got into running this lure. So because I'm trying to generate the interest in Abra, that's why I'm, it's pretty much like two lightning bolts that I've got. One lightning bolt going up and another one coming back. So it is not a smooth flowing track and it is not recommended for any dogs that are going to run this lure at any kind of pace. So it's a slow course, and it's just designed to change directions to really spark Abra's interest in it. And as she starts to pick up pace, I'll have to spread the, the track out and make it a little bit smoother for her. The big problem or the big risk with running the lure is injury to the dogs and the short, sharp changing of direction you know, 90 degree turns, that kind of stuff. That's really, really bad for the dog's joints. Um, so this is, again, I stress that this is purely a slow track to spark Abra's interest in, in the lure. I'm not running it fast. If she starts running fast, I'm gonna slow the lure right down and then change the track. Uh, if she goes full speed into it at any stage, I'll just stop, let her catch the lure and I'll adjust the track straight away. But judging by the last four or five runs, she's getting more and more interested, but is still just half pace jogging along. And then when she gets close, she puts in a big lunge and bites it, but doesn't um, 
doesn't really full sprint after it if it's out in front. So uh, again, just wanted to point this out, make sure anyone using the lure doesn't go, oh, that's a good idea, I'll use that track. I don't recommend it unless you're teaching a dog to do it that doesn't have a hard drive in it at this point. Adio. Let's see how you go, Abra. You ready, darling? You ready? Oh, good girl. You ready, darling? You ready? Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go, 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 go. Good girl, good girl. Radio, slowing it down, hit those corners, good. Righto, so she's starting to dive on it there. So, as you can see, she's, that's what I want to see. Good girl, darling, good girl. Good girl, darling, good girl. Good girl. Rightio, now I want her to tug a wall with it a little bit. Good girl, Abra. Girl, Abra. Good boy, Roscoe. Good boy, mate. Good boy, buddy. Good boy, Roscoe. Good job. Good girl, Abra. Good girl. So as soon as she drops it, I'm going to pull the trigger again and just get that interest in her chasing it. I want her to really want to hold onto it. I want her to value it. Out. Out. Good girl. Nope. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. So again, we can see... He's starting to increase that enthusiasm by wanting to attack the string. And uh, she's starting to enjoy the game. So I'm gonna change it up a bit this time. And she seems to really only like it on that initial uh, lunge when she's really close. So I'm gonna try to do a bit of training with her now, get her to ignore it, release her, get her to engage it. Get her to disengage and just have a bit of fun. See how she goes. Hey, bro. Good girl. Good girl. Abra. Hey, Abra. Hey, Good girl. Good girl. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Nope. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl. Engage. Good girl. Go. Go. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Well done. Good job. Good job. Out. Good. Nope. Out. Good girl. Sit. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Nope. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Good girl. Flash up. Engage. Good girl, go, good girl, darling. Good girl, Abra, well done. Good job. Good girl, darling, good girl. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl, sit. Sit. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Engage. Good girl, go, 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 girl, darling, good girl. Good girl, well done. Good job. Good girl, darling, good girl. Good girl. No, good girl, sit. Sit. Good girl, good girl, good girl. Engage. Good 
Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, darling. Sorry about my filming there. I think uh, I was watching that and pointing the wrong way. <laughs> well, we've definitely got a twig done to the lure here. And uh, we're getting a good disengage, but uh, reluctancy to sit. But that's all right. I just wanted to see where we're at. And uh, pretty good. Good girl. Good girl. Engage. Good girl, darling. Good job. Good job. Well done, darling. Good girl. Sabra's had a good run. Time to swap her out with another dog. Fresh legs. Good girl, darling. Rightio, the next two. Tank and Chopper. And they need no introduction to the lure. They are keen as mustard. They know the lure well. And I'm pretty sure they're both going to be very enthusiastic to have a run. So what we're going to do for these two is we are just going to do some training first up. And get them to ignore the lure while holding a drum. It's been a while since we've done this with these guys, so it's just refresher training as far as they're concerned, and uh, distraction. So uh, I'm not expecting that they're gonna hold that drop the first time, but second or third, I think they'll hold quite well. So let's give it a go. Good dogs. Good dogs, well done. First time held, very, very happy with that. I was expecting a break. Good dogs, good dogs. Free. Good dogs, well done. Good boy, good boy, well done. Good. Who's ready? Both very interested, aren't we? Yeah, good dogs. Rightio, so for these two, they are definitely seasoned on the lure which means I'm not going to run that zigzag lightning bolt pattern that I did before for Abra. This is just a big oval shape. So I'm running six pulleys to create nice smooth curves. Nothing close to 90 degrees, all nice open corners. Uh, more around the 120 to 130 degrees. So let's give them a run. Good boy, Chopper is ready. Good boy, mate. Retank, retank. Ready? Free! Go, go, go! Good dogs! Ah, oh, Chopper! Good boy! I was getting my camera sorted and you got it! Good boy, Chop! I was trying to get the camera on track. There he goes. Good boy, buddy. Sorry about the filming there, guys. Trying to do three things with two hands. Good boy, mate. Well done. Good boy. Good boy. That was good, mate. Good run. Yeah, good boy. Want to go again? Want to go again? Yeah, let's go again. Okay, come on. So over the last month, uh, I have noticed that Tanky Boy has been a little bit more focused on the uh, group play and chopper has been a little bit more focused on the um, intensity of the games that I'm running. So the motorbike run, the, the Swiss ball, the um, bushwalks, 
he's focused on me and what I'm trying to do, and Tank is more uh, inclined to want to make connections with the other dogs. Um, so I have noticed that initially these two dogs were relatively sloppy as far as performance goes. Like if you look at the Shepherds, they were always really impressive, high performing uh, athletic dogs. Tank and Chopper, they got good muscle, but they were never really powerfully fast or anything like that. And I just assumed that as they developed, because they are only quite young, that would come. And so what I'm seeing is Chopper is develop developing the coordination and power and speed much faster than Tank is, purely because of his drive to want to chase the motorbike and, uh, and and play the game and a bit more competitive than what Tank is. So now that they're running together, it's no surprise that Chopper's got him covered. Ready to go again, mate? Oh, you ready to go again, buddy? Yeah, exciting. Radio. I'm going to try to set up the camera at one setting and then just leave it. So sorry, I won't be zooming in or I'll miss it again. Good boy, tanky boy. Good boy. You ready? You ready, Tank? You ready, Chop? Oh, Chop's ready. Look at the intensity on Chop. Tank's a little bit more just relaxed there, mate. Hey, you want to cuddle? Is that what you want? You ready, Chop? Oh, yeah, Chop. Look at that focus. Ready, boys? Ready? Ready, free. Go, 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 go. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. He's turned around. Ah, oh, Tank, good boy, Tanky boy. Good boy, Tanky boy. Chop got turned inside out. He still thinks it's back at that pulley over there. Good boy, Tank. That was interesting. Yeah, good boy, Chop. So you can see Chopper was definitely much faster off the start. He, he put two lengths on uh, Tank straight away and the intensity was much, um, much greater in Chopper. It's no good for my back doing these things. Uh, the intensity was much greater in Chopper, but once Chop was out of the picture, Tank decided he wanted to play. However, when you saw that he had full range of um, the lure, he was just toying with it. So he's chasing it because all the dogs chase it and he thinks it's fun and it looks a bit exciting. Uh, however, he doesn't have that real drive to actually catch it, which you do see in Chopper. So it's interesting as they develop, their personalities uh, develop and they are all individual dogs. Just like our three shepherds, they're all very different. Uh, even though they're all uh, these two are from the same litter and they're brothers doesn't mean they're always going to be the same so I always find those little subtle differences quite interesting and you know it just goes to show they're all individual personalities just like we are and um, so I enjoy watching their, their development what triggers them what, what drives them, and clearly Chopper is, uh, is tuned in. I've noticed Chopper has much more developed back legs because of the endurance that he's started to pump out on those motorbike runs. He, he's starting to become like um, Maggie and uh, a few of those other dogs like Lily who just want to keep going, whereas Tank wears out. Now, if you remember when they were first introduced to the farm with the motorbike they were really slow just running at probably 50 percent pace and just sort of jostling behind the group playing with each other you know they weren't really involved in actually chasing me they were just running along because all these other dogs were running along and then they look at each other and go yeah let's wrestle you know so there was that that uh similar enthusiasm that what we saw abra here with the lure on her first time and then she's getting more and more intense and then over the couple of months that these guys have really tuned into chopper being very effective and and very committed to actually you know the objective of the game rather than just running along with the pack which tank still does what a chop want to go again mate you've caught your breath 
we'll go one last run and then we'll have a bit of a uh, bit more training all right change it to this setting oh look at that intensity so difference in intensity there versus there Sunday couch watching a movie ready for action Ooh. Ooh, you ready boys you ready go <laughs> now they both think it's in there These guys are funny. I think it is in that pulley. So this is where the difference of being lure wise and tank and chopper. So a dog like Bandit who is lure wise will just know to go to that next pulley. He understands the track, he understands where it's going. Oh, he's on, he's on. Good job, buddy. Well done, mate. Good job. Well done, tanky boy. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. Yeah, well done. Good job. Good boy, chop. Good boy, mate. Yeah, well done. Well done, boys. So I've just been called back to the house to uh, make sure that Fredo and Abra don't eat the cleaners. I don't think we would... Uh, Get them back in a hurry if that was the case. So, safe and sound, out of the house yard now. We can go back and uh, do a little bit more with Tank and Chop. Good boy, buddy! You thought I went to the back gate, did ya? Good job, mate. Good boy, mate. Look at that beautiful boy. Look at that beautiful boy. Hello, buddy. Good boy, mate. Well done. Did you look for me? Did you go looking for me at the back gate? I was coming back for you. Don't worry. I was coming back for you, mate. Good boy, buddy. Oh, good boy. Yeah. Oh, good boy, mate. Good boy. Yeah. Would you get worried I was going to leave you here? I would never leave you. Don't worry, mate. Don't worry. Good boy. Good boy, chop. Oh, Rightio, I think we'll give these guys a rest. They did pretty well. I am going to get the shepherds. They do love this. However, um, Rosie, she has a conflict of urges to go for the lure versus going for her sister. Um, Matilda just has eyes for winning the prize. She's very effective. She is usually one of the front runners of the whole pack. Uh, she is extremely athletic and just all round impressive. Just an athlete of a dog. Uh, then you got Banjo, who definitely has the same talents as uh, Matilda. Maybe, maybe not as much, but up there. He's definitely up there. However, he doesn't put himself to the target. He just likes to run interference on some of the other dogs. He likes to just be uh, a bit of a distraction, you know. It's funny because you can see him, he's intense, but he's looking around going, which dog am I going to block? Which dog am I going to take out? Which dog am I going to, um, you know, run off course? So he's just pretty much, it's a bit of a stirrer in the pack when it comes to the lure. Um, most of the time when it comes to the lure, I do have to sit him out. So I have to bring him out and put him in a drop and just say, sit out, mate. You are too much of a hassle for some of these dogs that just want to have a run. And he is a big dog, so when he just puts himself right in front of them, they got nowhere else to go but barge into him and they come off second best. So I'm going to get them out here, the three shepherds. I'm going to get them out here on the lure and give them a good run by themselves. And I'm going to make sure that we try to get uh, Rosie onto the lure. If she gets a little bit frustrated and starts to go at her sister, we might have to put Matilda away and then just bring Rosie out by herself because 
Matilda's not letting her have a have a go at it because she's far superior. Rightio, let's go get him. There's certainly no telling them twice. They're like, yep, yeah, let's go, we're on. <laughs> well done guys, that's it. They're coming back to wait for me. They're flying. I think they can't believe they're getting a private lure session. Good job guys. Good job. Guess what's over here, Matilda? Good boy, Banjo. Good boy. That's right, guys. Ah, there it is. There it is. Good girl. Well done. Mate, you excited, buddy? Good girl, Rosie. Good girl, Rosie. Good girl, Matilda. Yeah, you ready? I know that they're going to be excited for it. And I'm hoping that uh, Rosie decides that she wants to chase the lure and not take out a sister out of frustration. Although I dare say that's going to happen. And then I'm really hoping that Banjo gets involved because I think he will most certainly give Matilda a run for her money. Girl. You guys ready? Now for these guys, this is definitely a oval track. Matilda is super fast, puts her body on the line and I need to keep it out in front of her. Otherwise she will just go hard and watch and see what she does. Very impressive. Good girl, you guys ready? Oh yeah, good boy Banjo. Good boy, mate. That's right, you guys got the call up. You got the call up. Good dog. Good dogs. Good dogs. It's just a nice easy run. I'm just gonna let them go. See how they go. I'm hoping all three of them will just take off like a bull at a gate. And uh, I'm anticipating that Matilda's going to reign supreme. However, I'm hoping that Banjo gives a good run too. You ready? Look at that intensity on Matilda. She is ready. Rosie is focusing on Matilda. Good girl. You ready, Banjo? You ready, mate? You ready? Oh, Benjo's on, Benjo's on, yes. Oh, Matilda's on, yes. Oh, Rosie, good girl, yes. Oh, there goes that Matilda. Well done, Matilda. Good job, Matilda. Good girl, darling. Good boy, Benjo. Good boy, well done. Good boy, good girl. Good girl, good boy. Well done, good dogs. Good girl, Rosie, I saw you get in there. Good girl, well done. That was great, guys, hey? What a run from you guys. Rosie, that was good. There was no jealousy over there with your sister. Matilda just, what an athlete. Oh, we're caught up. Got some technical issues. We've got a tangle. Oh, here we go, somewhere there. There we go. Good to go, let's run it out. So first off, Matilda shot off and was out in front of the other two. She overshot the first corner. I might bring this out actually. Make it a bit bigger for these guys. They're a bit faster than what this course can allow them to go, so make it bigger. Uh, and then Banjo took over. So Banjo just went straight on, took over, had a crack at the lure, which was good because he doesn't usually do that. And then he overshot and missed it. And then Rosie took over and so she had a run at the front as well. And then after Matilda regained composure, um, she nailed it. She just took a big diving leap, came up with the lure in her mouth. I didn't even know she was that close to it. She's just really impressive. Good job, guys. Good job. 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 Good job.
Good stuff, Dallin. Good stuff. I'll we'll open this track right out here. Have a nice big one because these guys are fast. Good dogs. I'll change it to a different setting on the camera this time. Maybe we might get a bit better footage over the back there. Here it is. Oh yeah, Matilda is on. Banjo looks like he's on as well. Rosie, not too bad. You ready guys? Ready guys? Oh Banjo, good job buddy! Good boy Banjo! Good girl, Rosie! Good girl, well done! Good job! Good job, guys! Well done! Good boy, Banjo, that was awesome, mate! Yeah, you got it, buddy! You got it, mate! Good job! Good job, well done! It was a good dive! You look diving like your sister, hey? Good girl! Good girl, good boy! So you can see now what I was talking about with Abra. If you've got dogs that are seasoned on the lure course or on the lure machine, you do not want any sharp corners. You, they are flying past those pulleys. So any real sharp corners, they will try as hard as they can to stop and turn as fast as they can. And that is where you run the risk of them causing themselves an injury, whether it be to their uh, knees, to their you know, wrists, so they're breaking bones in their feet, uh, dislocating hips. There are all sorts of issues associated with that very sharp stop, turn, and full power accelerate. So uh, really open, smooth flowing corners so they can have high speed corners. Uh, and that's what these guys need. Just a big oval shape. Rightio, so pizza's just arrived. So I have to be quick because the kids will be wanting a feed but these guys are not finished Matilda just ran through the course there ah, get on that, get on that there we go, on Rightio, we're not finished yet, these guys are still keen, they got some running in them I want to do another run and You just pull that off? Maybe. Oh, you did. That's right. Want to do another run? These guys are super fit. They need a nice big run. And uh, let's see how they go. You guys ready? You guys ready for another one? Yeah, good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs. Ready to go again? Oh yeah, Matilda, you are on. Good dogs. Right here, we just got a delivery turn up. I'm pretty sure it's my First bulk delivery direct from Zewi Peak. At least I'm assuming. You just said there's 25 boxes. I'm hoping that's what it is. Ready. Ready. Go! Good girl, well done, good dogs. Good dogs. Good dogs, well done, Banjo. Good girl, Matilda. Good dogs, well done, good girl. Good girl. Well done, Banjo, good boy. All right, let's turn this off. 
<laughs> We've got that delivery driver in the driveway there, so we just have to wait a little bit for him. Have a drink, guys. That's it. Have a drink. Good girl, Matilda. Good girl. Well done. Good boy, Banjo. Good boy, mate. That was a good run, guys. That's better. That's better. Except, Banjo, you're standing on that line. Ready? Banjo standing on the line there. Come on, Banjo, take one step. Ready? Ready? There we go, that's what I wanted. Good dog, you ready? Go! Good girl, well done guys. Good boy, Banjo. Good job. Well done, good dog. Good dogs. Good dogs, well done. Good dogs. Good dogs. Okay, let's go back, huh? We'll go back and have some lunch. Good dogs. Come on, let's go. We got another load of seaweed peak. Good stuff. So this box is direct from uh, seaweed peak. So very excited. This will be, I think, um, two and a half weeks worth of food. It did take a little bit longer than I anticipated, so it means I'll have to put in a new order when I am halfway through this, just so that we don't run out. Radio. It's exciting. Let's go and get the boxes out there. Not those boxes. Not those boxes. Those boxes. Not those boxes. Those boxes. Yeah, you, Maggie. You, Barney, and Hope. Let's get you guys out there and do some lure running. You ready, guys? Hey guys. Oh, Barney, you're keen. Oh, here comes Hope in on the action. Oh, they've lost it. Maggie thinks he's got it. <laughs> What happened, Barney? Where'd it go, mate? What happened? What happened? You lost it. Barney is keen. You ready, Barney? Lightning fast. Good girl, Hope. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Good girl, Hope. Good girl, darling. That was fantastic. That's what I wanted to see. Hope has the best. Little hot shoe shuffle when she gets going. She just does these really powerful short strides, and you know that she's got a lot more in the tank when she does it, but it's just so fun to watch. Once she saw it, she just took off. Let's see if she can get into top gear this time. But gee, I got a big smile on my face when I saw her do that. Hopefully we caught it on camera. I was a little bit too enthusiastic and excited about the fact that she'd taken off after it.
that I had no idea what the camera was doing. This lure feels like it's slipped off somewhere. I'm not sure I know that Hope and Maggie have both been chewing the cable behind me. But it feels a bit tight. Like there's a bit of resistance there, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Hopefully it runs all right. Maybe it's back here. It does feel very tight though. Ah, oh, I see what's going on. Ah! Hope just bit the line and snapped it. But this is what's going on. This little thing right here. What's going on there? Now I've got to follow the line. Find the on the brake because I know oh unless you just pulled it off the pulley that would be good Should you just pull it off the pulley because it went slack is that still tension oh I think we might be good here you just pull it off the pulley that's good Radio. we're on You usually have a very soft mouth, so I was surprised that they could bite that line. But we're okay, we are okay, guys. You ready? Ready, Hope? Oh, she's missed it. Good dog, well done, well done, good dogs. Good dogs, well done, Hope. Good job. Good job, Barney, you got left behind on that one though, mate, I must say. You were good in the first half, but Maggie and Hope brought it home strong. <laughs> you ready mate? You ready? Hope you're ready darling. Now remember, it's in my hand. You ready? You ready? Oh my goodness. There it goes. Okay, you ready, darling? You ready? Go, Barney, go. Good job. There's that sprint. Good boy, Barney. Much better finish, mate. Good job. Well done. Maggie lost at turn three. Good girl, darling. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Have a drink. Good boy, Barney. Good boy. Have a drink. Come on. Have it here. Good girl, Maggie. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Have a rest, guys. Good dogs. So you can see the difference there between the fitness level of the shepherds and the boxers. Maggie's got good endurance. Uh, Barney also can't really complain. But Hope doesn't put on a sprint like that very often. And so she's put on 110% in that one. And you can see she's struggling after that. So we're going to give her a bit of a break because she's putting everything she's got into this and after a couple of runs she needs a rest. 
panting like this, tongue all the way out, uh, laying down flat on the floor like this. Um, you know, she's she's at her limit as far as comfortably recovering. Uh, if you push her past this, she's going to be uncomfortably recovering. And that's gonna be where she literally is struggling. She may go into a bit of a panic. She may just feel like she can't catch her breath enough. She may start to collapse. She may start to hyperventilate. And one of the ways to tell if they are really struggling like that <coughs> is if their nice deep panting shortens and turns into micro panting. So they're sitting there going like really, really fast, but such a shallow pant. That's a problem. That means you have overworked your dog and they are in trouble. Uh, that's at a time when you would hunt for shade, go for cool packs, cover them with water, cool down their armpits, just try to help cool their body as best you can to help them drop back into a more deeper breath. You look at Barney here, this is a nice deep pant. Using, and same with Maggie, nice deep pant, no problem at all. Hope's doing the same thing. She's panting nice and deep. However, she seems to be struggling more than the other two. And when I say struggling, there's nothing concerning about what she's doing. Uh, I suppose I'm just pointing out at this point, if you do see your dog doing this kind of thing, they are reaching uh, their limit of being able to recover. She's recovering no problem at all. Barney and Maggie are definitely recovering a lot uh, easier than she is. So for hope's sake, we're gonna give her a break, let her calm right down, catch her breath, let her able to close her mouth and breathe normally through her nose, and then we'll give her one more run. <clears throat> you don't wanna overrun her and, uh, and cause her to go into that shallow breathe. I've only ever seen it happen twice in the whole time I've been running the daycare with all the, uh, the city dogs coming to the farm over the last seven years that we've been running it seven probably close six or seven years that we've been running daycare so um and it was twice on a brachycephalic dog so one was a frenchie and i think the other one was a um a bulldog mix but they both had the brachycephalic breed so that's what the boxes are the short nose uh these guys aren't too bad but when you get the Frenchies or they got a really short nose, then um, they do, you have to watch them very carefully. Especially Frenchies because they are intense. They will go as hard as they possibly can every single time. They give it 110%. I love Frenchies. So if you do have a Frenchie and you're doing anything like this, be very careful in the hot weather and don't overrun them. They will run themselves into exhaustion straight away and they won't be able to recover properly. Uh, so this kind of recovering is A-OK, -okay, no problem at all. Just make sure you do give them enough time to recover properly. And so I wanna see this panting slow down a bit more and turn into this panting where she's closing her breath, she's licking her lips, she's able to close that mouth and not be in too much stress. But you can see Hope here is uh, a little less fit than the rest of them and she's putting in as much as she possibly can to get that lure. So that's what I want to see. I want to see that drive. I want to see her put every effort she can into it. And then she'll gain a bit of, excuse me, she'll gain a bit of power and a little bit more endurance. Maggie, she goes all day. She runs me, with me on the motorbike. She's able to really stretch out those legs and go into a 70 to 80% run for a very long time. But the sprints, they take it out here. The sprints are really, really intense. I used to be a sprinter myself, and so I know what it's like. The difference between a 100, a 200, and a 400 meter sprint. Um, at the end of the 400, you are gassed. And so you really need that time to recover. Nice deep breaths. Maggie's already ready to go. Uh, Hope still needs a little bit longer. Barney could go again, but we're just gonna wait and let Hope recover properly. Have a bit more of a drink. Give her five or 10 minutes to recover. Good girl, darling, good girl. Good girl, it's all right, just relax. We can all take a nice, chilled out break under the tree. Good boy, Barney, did you like that, mate? Yeah, good job, Barney boy. Good boy, mate, good boy. Good boy. So the shepherds were showing no signs 
of uh, giving up. Okay, we're ready to go another four or five runs in a row there. But we cut it short because of pizza. And now we're under the boxes. Uh, so I do want to give Fredo and Roscoe a run on this. Um, Fredo, we don't want to give very much. I'm probably going to give him one run. Maybe two, depends how he goes. The first one, if he runs a good one, then that'll be it. But um, look, Maggie's already out there. She's out there searching. Where's this lure? I lost it at this uh, turn before. She's out there searching for it. So she's ready to go. Barney would be ready if I let it go. But I just want to give Hope another five minutes. Just calm herself down. You can see Barney's tongue versus Hope's tongue there. Very different. Barney's tongue's nice and relaxed. Hope's tongue's curling up quite a bit. And so that just tells me that uh, she's a little bit less fit than the other two. Needs a bit more time recovery. Look at, look at Maggie. So come on, guys. Where is it? <laughs> uh, Maggie, I love her. Barney's ready. Look at him. He can't wait. Nah, I'm going to play with it. <laughs> Taking out her frustrations on the actual pulley there, trying to rip it out of the ground. That's that pulley on the ground there. Nice relaxed tongue there from Barney. Still a little bit of tension in that tongue there. That's better. There we go. So she's able to lick her mouth. She's able to recover. That's a good sign. She's getting ready. She'll go another one. Nice drink of water. That's it. Good girl. So it's a nice sunny day, but we are definitely into autumn now. So summer is over. We're getting into autumn uh, on the other side of the world. Everyone is in, in spring. Uh, it's starting to warm up over there. Whereas for us, we've just passed our summer and it is cooling down. So um, <clears throat> we don't run the dogs very hard in summer at all. We focus more on the pool. We focus on keeping all the dogs cool. And so now in the autumn is where we start to pick up the intensity. We start to build up their fitness again. So even though uh, it's been very hot and the dogs are, you know, just with everyone, when it's so hot, you just want to sit there and go, ah, it's too hot to do anything. So it's the same with the dogs. And then slowly as it gets cooler, we'll start to pick up the intensity. We'll start to pick up the workload through the day and they'll be super fit by the end of winter. They will be the fittest they are all year at the end of winter. And then as it starts to warm up, we slow it down again. And uh, in summer, we just focus on the pool. Good stuff, guys. There we go. Now, if we look at Hope's tongue now, it's a little bit more relaxed. So it's not, as, not curling up as much. And you see Maggie here, no dramas. Barney, nice relaxed tongue. He's ready. But look at that, nice closed mouth now, much more relaxed. Another five minutes or so for Hope, and then we'll do another run. So they're all up and running again now. I haven't done anything, I'm still sitting under the tree. But you can see they're all ready to go. So just gonna give them another couple of minutes, even though they're showing signs of being keen. Just want to give him one more chance to recover and then we'll have another run. So if they're not completely ready, they will go into a state of heightened alert uh, intensity where they close their mouth and they just focus everything through um, you know they just focus everything on on the like if you look at what Rani's doing now. They close their mouth, they start to get really intense. And so I don't want to get them to this stage when they're not ready to close their mouth and breathe out their nose. So they're all ready to go now. So I walk it out. Let's go one more run. Ready, guys. Ready, 
guys. Good job guys, well done, good run. Good girl, good girl, well done. Good boy, good, boy. good girl. All right mate, yeah, 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 you're excited, I know. I know, you're excited. Yes, mate, yes. I see. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, it's all right, mate. It's all right. We're going to have a run. Yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, just relax. What do you know, these guys are keen. Let's see them go. Good job, well done guys. Where is it, where is it? Oh, I ran around your leg, good job. Well done, good run buddy, good run. It's still tangled around your mouth. Uh, yeah, good job. No, I'm not gonna let you rip it off there. You'll take that off to the trees. Well, I'll give you one more run, but look at it. Oh, we got it tangled on your feet there, mate. There we go. <laughs> one last one for you, Fred. That's it. Nope. That was a false start, mate. Good job. Good boy. Someone stepped on it and pulled it out of my fingers. You, you're stepping on it. Get out of it. What do you
Good job, Fredo. Good job, mate. Well done, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, Fredo. You missed it. Well done, Fredo. Good boy, buddy. Good job. That's enough for you, mate. Good job, buddy. Well done. Good job. Yeah, well done, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, mate. Good boy. Well done. Good boy. Have a rest, mate, big fella. Good job, guys. Good job, Fredo. Well done, mate. Good boy, buddy. Yeah, well done, mate. Good boy. Good boy, mate. So, Fredo, he's an old boy, especially for a Rottweiler. He's a, he's a good age, although he's enthusiastic. We just have to settle him down. We can't let him run too much. He's not... Um, He's not breathing as hard as Hope was, but you just saw then the way that he just dropped and went to his belly and just said, you know, I'm tired, but his brain's still saying, I want more. So unfortunately for Fredo, we have to keep it really short and I'll have to gauge over the next 24 hours how he handles that. The younger dogs will bounce back real fast. It's just a simple loss of breath. They're, they've exerted all their energy and um and once they catch their breath they're, they're back to gold it's not a big run for them but for the old boy he uh his recovery is assessed over the next 24 hours how's he pulling up is he pulling up sore does he struggle to get up at night when he's changing position does he struggle to get up when he's going to the toilet these are all the things that we look for when they start to age because it won't just be that initial recovery where he's catching his breath. It'll start to be, how sore is he? You know, he's got a lot of issues uh, being older. And so we don't want to aggravate any of those sorenesses and, um, and, you know, lower the quality of life he has over the next week because he's so sore and recovering from just a little run. So we plan today would just be one, maximum two runs. Nice, smooth run. He had a good run there. So I'm happy with that. We're going to sit Fredo out um, and then we'll give Roscoe another couple of runs because he is fresh. Aren't you, mate? Fredo can just chill out, have a drink. We'll give Roscoe a run. Hello, Frankie. Hello, Frankie. Hi, buddy. Hi, mate. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi. Come on, mate. Oh, yeah, what's going on? We're at the farm. We're at the farm. <laughs> I just put him through here. Hello, mate. Ready to go, aren't you? Good timing. So we've just got Frankie turned up for a holiday. G'day, Frankie. You ready, mate? Are oh, you coming in? Coming in. We're going to give you a run, mate. We're going to give you a run, not a ride. Hey, we're going to give you a run, mate, not a ride. We're going to ride instead. Come on, mate. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. You had a bit of a rash on the side of you there. You got some lost colour there. Hey. Oh. Okay, hold on, mate. Hold on. I know. We'll have cuddles in a minute. Let's just get some, wear some of those beans out. Even though he is getting a little bit older, Frankie, he's still a Vizsla. And he has been, hands down, the most intense Vizsla we've had here at the farm before. So, uh, let's give you a run, mate. You ready? You ready? Let's go. Just a private one for Roscoe now, because Fredo's had enough, but uh, Roscoe's still ready to go. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy boy. Are oh, you excited? You excited, mate? 
Yeah, good boy. Here it is. Yeah, good job. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. Oh. Oh. Good boy. <clears throat> One last run, then we're going to pack it up for the day. You ready, buddy? You ready, mate? Oh, don't turn around too much. I like to lose it at that turn too. Here it is, mate. It's over here. It's over here. Come on. Come on. Here it is. Here it is. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, where is it? Where is it? Good boy, good boy, mate, hey? Good job. Good boy, mate, yeah. Good boy. Good boy, how was that? How was that, mate? Good boy. Good boy, oh God. It's on the ground still, look. Good boy, mate, well done, good job. Good job, buddy. Well done. Good boy. Good boy, mate. Well done. You gonna slobber all over me on the way back? Of course you are. It's A-OK -okay with me, buddy. How was that, mate? That was pretty fun, wasn't it? We ran out of time today to keep going with the other dogs, but I think it was much more productive doing them individually like that rather than that big group, it's just a little bit chaotic now with this many dogs and not all of them knowing exactly how to play the lure. So now that we are tuning them all in, it'll be a lot easier and a lot more cohesive when they're all together. Good boy, mate, good boy. Alright, come on mate, let's go.